What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of PNIX, Atari, and some of the top direct response marketers, Joe Sugarman, Ron Popeil, and many more. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com that helps service-based professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, coaches, even copywriters, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-to-one client work to one-to-many. Rise 25 is an accountability and group coaching program and retreats as Jim thinks I was doing it from a lobby of a hotel, but this is actually from one of the the retreats that we do here. Um, And it was founded by my business partner, John Corker, and myself, where we bring together like-minded entrepreneurs from different client-serving backgrounds. You can go to rise25.com, check out more, and we have, you can download your free dream product ladder, which helps you map out your dream business on one sheet of paper, so check it out. And I'm very excited. The buzz is all about Jim Edwards and FunnelScripts.com. So today we have Jim, Jim Edwards, who's a top direct response marketer, entrepreneur. Uh, Jim started back in 1997 writing eBooks and today has a very popular software product that helps shortcut the process of writing copy for e-commerce, webinars, and much more. You can find it on FunnelScripts.com. Jim, talk about, talk about the decision. You know, if you go to Funnel Scripts, you can sign up for a webinar. What's the decision there about having someone watch a webinar as opposed to someone just buying? Like someone's ready to buy right now after hearing you talk about this. Um. Well, I mean, I can give you a, a link that they can go to just to buy. But the big thing is you got to understand it's it's kind of like when I bought my truck. I bought the truck because I liked the color and it would tow the trailer that my wife convinced me to buy and it matched the the interior matched my Rolls Royce. So I said, okay, I got a big white truck. It it was at the time actually. Oh, and the back window on the, you know, on the back of a pickup truck, you know, that flat window on the back, I can hit a button and the whole window goes down. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I got to have it. But then what happened was after I bought, I... I started seeing all these things about it that was actually a really cool truck, that it it had adjustable headlights and it had a tow package that makes it easy to go up mountains and whatnot. But I think if I had known that, I would have bought with more confidence instead of just, oh, I guess I can fork out 55 grand for this truck just because. But I might have felt better about it at the time and I might have gotten more use out of it sooner. And also... If I tell you that funnel scripts cost ten thousand dollars, you're like, oh my god, that's too expensive. But then if I told you, well, I'm not going to charge you ten thousand for funnel scripts, but some copywriter is going to charge you ten thousand dollars minimum to write a, a twenty page sales letter for you, is that expensive? And you might say, oh, that's yeah. expensive. And somebody else might say, oh, that's too cheap. And somebody else might say, well, I guess ten thousand. If I can make twenty thousand from doing it, it's worth doing. So it's all it's all relative. Yeah. But once you Give understand, them a little perspective, yeah. Right, but once you understand that that funnel, you know what what the real deal is with copy. And let me tell you, I'm okay. I'm gonna piss some people off right now, but that's okay. Let me. I'm gonna ask you a question. Why would someone who is capable of writing a sales message that can generate a million dollars in sales, why would they write that sales message for you for five or ten thousand dollars? Why would they do that? Are you asking me? Yeah, why? I mean, yeah. well, I can think of a few, but one is their talent is in this, maybe not in business building. It's just in writing copies. So there's a lot so of you others. want someone that's bullshit. Yeah. If they if they know and if they know, then they're doing it. And that's why I tell people I'm the greatest copywriter in the world that I ever hired. There are plenty of people who write better copy than me, but I'm the best one that I ever hired. And I figured that if anybody was going to be able to, to do $100,000, million, dollar, and $10 million sales letters, which I have done, it needed to be me, not me paying somebody else and praying that it would work. So that's my first question you, you need to think about, all right? Seriously, someone who can write that level of copy ain't going to do it for you for $10,000. Oh, for sure, yeah. Plus, you're going to have to wait in line. 
to be able to to get them to work for you. So it's not like you have the you don't have the flexibility to be able to say, hey, damn, I got an idea, I got an audience, I got a problem I want to solve, a way to do it. Let me run this out there and, and just see if it'll work. And so that's that's the first big point. And I can't remember the second point, so I'll think about it and just I'll it'll come back to me in just a minute. No, the, the second again? point is C point number one. <laughs> C point number one, yeah. <laughs> so that's that I, I kind of went off on a tangent and I lost my I train like of thought tangents. and I apologize. No, I like the tangents. Um, it, it's basically you were saying if you could, you know, someone could write it like a 10,000 or, you know, make a million dollars off uh, writing a, why would they do it for someone else? You know, they'll just do it for themselves and probably right. not, not be hired. Yeah. I mean, that's what Gary him. Halbert said. If you want to, if you want to write, I don't remember the exact quote, but it's basically if you want to make a fortune, you're going to need to learn how to do it yourself yeah. because otherwise you're going to wait in line for a long time and you're going to pay a crap ton of money. Yeah. So, oh, you were asking about the, the other thing is understanding about watching why we're doing the webinar instead of just saying, here's what it is. Yeah. You know, you need to understand, get the perspective on what copywriting is and, and why you need to um, be good with it yourself. And then you also need to see how something works. You don't buy a car without test driving it first, hopefully. Um, but so you need to see how something works, see what it does, see yeah. how it how it performs. So that's yeah. the other reason. So then you know you've made a good decision. Right. Yeah. I just like, you know, I always observe smart marketers and what not always what they're saying, but actually what they're doing. Right. And so in this situation, that's what you're doing, you know, and to know some of the behind the scenes thought process of why that is. Well, one of the best one of the best things you can do from a sales copy perspective, if it is at all possible with your product, is to demo it. Is if if you can, and you might think, oh, how is a demo sales copy? How is a demo not sales copy? If you can see, I once bought a five thousand dollar shrink wrapper based on a twenty second demo video. Mm. I mean, think about that. So if you can show somebody, again, back to what problem do you solve, who do you solve it for, how do you solve it, and if you can say, you know, hey, Jeremy, I know you need to write a sales letter between now and Monday, and you have limited experience in creating sales copy, so let me take two minutes and show you this cool piece of software that you basically just fill in a form and whack a button and it kicks out the first draft of a really good sales letter. Oh, this is the other point I wanted to tell you. This is the thing you need to understand about people who write sales copy. People who write sales copy use these things called swipe files. And so anybody who's going to write a sales letter for you, the first thing they're going to do if they know what they're doing is they're going to ask you a crap ton of questions. All right, They're going to send you a 10, 20 page questionnaire asking you all these questions about your product, about your market, about features and benefits and payoffs and background and your history and why they should listen to you and statistics and testimonials and all this other stuff. And you're going to spend hours filling this thing out, right? And then they're going to give you back a sales letter and you're going to say to yourself when you see all your own stuff regurgitated to you in these little chunks and patterns, well, holy shit, I could have just done that myself if I'd have known what the patterns were. And I would have said, no, duh. Yes, you could. So that's the other thing that will really <laughs> right. piss you off. You pay somebody 10 grand, you answer a bunch of questions, and then it seems like they're just copying and pasting out of the questionnaire. That will get your blood going. Love it. Thanks, Jim. So trends. I want to talk about trends because obviously – you see trends because you're in the industry, you know, maybe two or three or five years before someone else. What's going on now, you know, in relate to obviously also because you have these customers coming into funnel scripts in different industries. What are you seeing now with funnel scripts that maybe you will introduce into funnel scripts or that you're just seeing in terms of patterns um, in business right now? The big thing is shorter it doesn't take 20 pages to persuade anybody anymore. It, it's get to the point. It's hitting the emotional hot buttons with people. It's hitting the benefits and the fears and, and, and the desires and doing it quickly because people have the attention span of a gnat now. Think yeah. about since 2007, what's that thing in Facebook that they call, what's that called? Your news? The news feed. Feed. What's it called on Twitter? It's your Twitter... Feed. feed okay 
people's attention span has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's the whole feed mentality. So what instead of having one giant sales message that you put out there that's good for weeks or months or years, you literally have to come up with little sales message, bite-sized things that keep going out that are trying to hit people on whatever hot button to get them to take the next phase, the next step that you want them to take. And that's the other thing is that everybody's got to think of this. I mean, that's really why funnels are so popular now is because marketing is very incremental you you have to th view it as as stages where you know the first stage is to get somebody to click off of facebook linkedin email whatever adwords all these different things then the next step is i need to get them to opt in then the next step is i need to get them to convert um, I think that's one of the trends that I don't think is ever going to go away. It's just got to happen faster. And the only way it can happen faster is you've got to understand your customer better than they understand themselves so that you can accomplish as much in 20 words as it used to take two pages to do. It's like Mark Twain said one time, you know, I wrote you a long letter because I, I didn't, you know, I was short on time. Right, exactly. Uh, if I would have written you a short one, but I didn't have enough time to, right. to really think it through. So so the shorter messages take more thought, You you so you need to pay attention to the patterns that get you. One of the ways that you can do that that has nothing to do with funnel scripts, though everybody should be using funnel scripts, is pay attention to what gets you to stop in your feed. Because if we, um, if, if we're... In our own audience, which we really should be. I mean, I, I know that some people are like, oh, I'm going to be in the wedding niche. I'm going to be in the travel trailer niche. But I've been, never been married and I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm scared to go outside, but I can do it. But normally we're in our own niches. So yeah. pay attention to the stuff that gets you to stop in your tracks in that feed. That, yeah. that to me is the, is the biggie. The other thing is being able to close in person. Facebook live video, being able to, to do short videos where you're able to speak persuasively. And, and speaking persuasively, again, it's just a script. It's yeah. just knowing what to say. It's like, hey, Jeremy, now that we've talked about Facebook, I'd like to invite you to come over to Funnel Scripts and watch a presentation about how you can create three different types of Facebook ads in literally two and a half minutes. So... Go ahead and click the link real quick, and I'm going to give you a little quick presentation, a lesson on what I do in order to, to get click-through rates as high as 9%, which is 4,000 times the average uh, click-through rate on Facebook. So go ahead and click the link. So, I mean, that you, you've got to be able to come up with those and, and be able to use them again. And you don't get rewarded by being original. You get rewarded by being effective. So shorter, more impactful pithy and understanding that you have to come up with multiple sales messages and use them rather than just having one that that's going to be your, you know, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener, you know, that coming up with that kept a company going for 20 years. Now it might keep you going for a couple days. <laughs> that's a scary thought. Um, the uh, So Jim, system, I want to talk about systems for a second because you have a lot of ideas you have a lot of features, things that you're adding into the product. How do you keep track of all of them? Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I have... Oh, where's my piece of paper? Ta-da! I have a list. All I do is just write stuff down. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. I, I have a feature list of things yeah. that I want to do. Um, I have a feature list of things that people ask for, um, and then I mean, I, you know, I just write it down, keep it, track of it on a piece of paper. There's nothing magical about it. It's just I just write it down. But it's based on what users are telling me that yeah, they want. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering because some user could say some off the wall thing. How does it and make it do. on the list? You have to be like, okay, I have to hear this from like five people before mm. I actually do it, or no, know. it's more. I look at it as a user because I use funnel scripts all the time. That right. that's a funny thing. I use I am the biggest yeah. user of funnel scripts there is. And so like the other day, I needed to create a script. I was actually wanting to do a case study. So I needed to do a case study to um for another product I had and I said, "Okay, 
I need to do this case study. So what questions am I going to ask? And then I said to myself, self, and myself said, yes. I said, so we can either do this once and we'll forget about it. Or what we can do is we can make a script to make a case study. Yeah. And then we can let everybody be able to make case studies. And so that's another where they come from, too. I, I know that if I need it, probably somebody else would need it. Yeah. And then and then explain to people, you know, what's the difference between a testimonial and a case study and feedback. And and so there's also a lot of education that goes along with this too is uh, explain to people what, you know, how to use the stuff and and why it's important. But then if I have 5 or 10 or 15 people saying, "Hey, I wish it did this," then then I yeah. pay attention to that as well. Yeah. A lot of time you you have to scratch your own itch and uh sure. it allows you to do it over and over again. Jim, I really appreciate your time on this. And uh, I know we only have a few more minutes left so you don't get yelled at by your wife. So um, I wanted to ask two questions and then point people towards where they should find out more about you, whether it's frontalscripts.com or any other places. Uh, the two last questions, one, I always, you know, since it's Inspired Insider, I always like to know uh, a low point and how you push through and then a proud moment. And um, I know we talked about the, the hard point on the business side, but you also had that health scare um, that happened. Earlier. Yeah, I, um, I had a, I woke up one morning and my heart was going 180 some odd beats a minute in the top. You were young. The bottom right? couldn't keep, yeah, I was 30. Wow. Um, and I had just been under so much stress for so long there was a family history of this type of thing. It's called atrial fibrillation. Mm, um, yeah. I wasn't aware of it. It's like as soon as I was in the hospital, oh, yeah, your grandfather had the – thanks. I um, would have known that. But, but, I mean, when you're sitting in a hospital bed, you're not even 30 years old. I was still living in a trailer park at that point trying to turn everything around. And I just realized at that moment, this was still when I was trying to make that business work with some partners. I just realized right then, you know what? What I'm doing right now is not working. And instead of trying to fix, it's like you're at, I'm at the end of my rope and I'm trying to hang on and climb back up this rope. I need it. It's not holding it like this. I'm just holding it like this. I just need to drop it. And I need to really sit there and, and, and just make the changes, even though it's going to hurt. Mm. And so we had, you know, I got diagnosed with a heart condition. Within a couple, three months, we declared bankruptcy. Um, just couldn't keep going anymore. But what came out of that was some real clarity of, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. Mm. I mean, this was in 1996. Um, or it was 97, 90. I don't know. I need to, anyway... I don't like to dwell on that stuff because I'm just not the kind of person who, who dwells on that. Some people can tell you wrote and verse of the day and date and time and the doctor's name and all the shit that's happened to him. I just kind of, it goes off, you know, one of these things. But, but I realized I was in the right spot, but I had to bear down even harder to figure out what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And, and what I realized I was supposed to do was help people who were not technically inclined, but needed to get the results that I could figure out how to get it. So that's really been, if you want to get down to the core of who Jim Edwards is, I help non-technical people use technology to get the results they need to get. And I call it the liberal arts side of the internet. So, so that's, that's a real huge positive that came out of a real bad negative and and then something that I would just I would I would caution everybody. And again, I'm not a doctor, consult your whatever. But a lot of times you'll get a you will get a diagnosis from a doctor. You don't necessarily have to accept that as your fate for the rest of your life, because I took medication for 14 years that I should not have been taking. Mm. I should have gone to see another doctor. That I was taking some real powerful beta blockers, and they caused me to put on a ton of weight, caused me to have terrible mood swings, caused just a lot more problems than they solved. I decided I was going to get into shape, started getting into shape, but was still taking this medication, and almost ended up dying as a result of the medication. Wow. 
because I had it sent me, you know, you know, when you hear those pharmaceutical ads on TV where they're, you know, may cause rectal bleeding, may cause a, a severe decrease in blood pressure, may cause you to bleed from your ears or, or you know, right, to jump yeah. off a cliff. Well, I had that happen to me. My yeah. blood pressure dropped down to like 40 over 20. Wow. The only reason I'm alive is because I was next door at my next door neighbor's house at a party and his daughter is a paramedic. Wow. And I collapsed and she was standing next to me when I collapsed wow. and she saved my life That's right there. Crazy. So my po my point though is is that you can <laughs> don't ever let something like that define you. Let it give you clarity and then figure out how to change your life and change your circumstances. Now I'll be 50 this year. I regularly run half marathons. The last half marathon I ran, I ran with a 35-pound plate on my back. Wow. Um, I can do 20 pull-ups in a row. Uh, I mean, I I've totally changed my life through the power of my mind. And so just, just yeah. take, don't, most people look at the low points and let them define them. Let the low point define you in a way that gives you power to drive you forward to get better. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Jim, thank you. Thanks for that powerful story. I appreciate you sharing that. We will defer the proudest moment because I don't want you to get yelled at by your I'm wife. I'm good. So. I'm good. She'll wait. She'll be all right. Proudest, proudest moment so far. My and proudest could, yeah. moment, my proudest moment ever, um, was when my son-in-law. And if I tear up, well, get over it. My son-in-law uh, was in the army. He was in the National Guard. Uh, they were deploying to Iraq. And they didn't have the equipment that they needed. Uh, they were going over. They didn't have a ton of stuff that they needed. My wife and I bought a lot of equipment for an entire company of National Guard soldiers. We wow. bought them lights. We bought them cameras. We bought them. Um, we bought a ton of stuff. I mean, tens and tens of thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And. I was able to do it without even thinking about it. And so in October of 2007, um, we got the email that nobody wants to get that, that your kid had been hit by a roadside oh bomb. Five of them in the truck, two of them were killed. The other three were really screwed up badly. And so my son-in-law, he was driving when they got hit. The other two got blown out, killed. The others were burning inside the truck. He mm -hmm. crawled out the top started returning fire from the, the hood of his truck. And um, he had put his own tourniquet on. Medic runs up, grabs him off the truck, throws him in the back of the ambulance, turns on his headlamp, looks down, sees that John's um, tourniquet is on wrong, adjusts it, stops the bleeding, wow. and comes up to the um, commander the next day. And he says, I just want you to know, whoever gave us those lights, they let them know that it saved a soldier's life. Wow. He said, you're not going to believe that, but that the people that gave that were his family. And so my proudest moment was that I was able to do that, to use the money that we have made. And I've made a lot of money. I'm not white trash, trailer trash anymore. I'm, I'm white trash living in a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the trash out of the trailer, but you can't take the trailer out of the trash. But, um, my proudest moments have been the impact that I've been able to make, not yeah. the things that I bought. You know, I, I've got it. Believe it or not, I've got a Rolls Royce sitting in my my uh, garage. I thought you was. I, I thought you were half kidding about the interior no. matching. Your... No, it matches the truck. Oh my gosh! But the but none of that really gives me the pleasure of being right. able to help somebody and being able to have an impact on somebody's life. Yeah. And so now, like whenever I go out to dinner, I like to pay, not because I'm the, you know, oh, I, I can pay. But I remember a guy when I was selling insurance, when I went to a training and I had no money, I was going on fumes and I got invited to lunch and I said, you know, I, I, I don't have any, I can't go to lunch. I don't have any money. And the guy said, don't worry about it. I'll buy you lunch. Yeah. And I don't remember the guy's name, but I just remember that generosity and, and having, being able to impact people. So I would tell everybody. Once you have made it, number one, don't believe you've made it, all right? You're, once you start doing well, though, it's important to make a difference in Get the back. world yeah. and, and to make a difference that really is in ways that are important to you because that's, in the end, the only thing you're going to remember is the impact yeah. that you had on the world. And so just 
that's yeah. what I would say about that. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Jim, that should be on every single webinar you ever do at the end. Be like, I mean, not in a self-serving perspective of you should buy funnel scripts, but I mean, one of the reasons why you could have, you saved your son-in-law's life and other people in that arena is because you were able to sell things, you know, in an effective manner. And, and, uh, that's the most powerful thing, which is that impact. So thank you. There you go. Jeez. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was fun. So people should go to funnelscripts.com. Anywhere else we should point them towards? Um, if you want to see the musings of Jim Edwards and whatever yeah, else we have, you can, you can go to the Jim Edwards method.com. Yes. Um, Great stuff there. You should check it out that you put some stuff on uh, Earl Nightingale, some videos there and some of your thoughts. So everyone should definitely check out the G the Jim Edwards method.com and specific slash blog. And you can check out your musings and everything else. So Jim, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Thanks for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.